Hey everybody, it's Sue here. Are you ready to continue our look and study of God's Word as we work our way through Pastor Mark Batterson's book, Whisper, How to Hear the Voice of God? This week we're in chapters 6 and 7, and what we're doing is continuing into the seven languages that God speaks to us through, the seven languages that Mark felt led to write about. Of course, last week, the first uh, of those steps or those languages was the very Word of God itself. It's the key of keys, isn't it? Every other language, er, uh, how God speaks to us will always align and stand upon what is already written in the closed canon of the scripture. But God does speak, and He works in a variety of ways, just like He did in Bible times. And chapter 6 is called the voice of gladness. This is the voice or the language of God's desires. It is based on one of the most beautiful promises in the Bible, and that's Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Now, what's so key about this verse is learning to delight in the Lord. We have tons of desires, but our desires can lead us astray. And But many times, those desires are God-given desires. But still, because we're so uh, got our eyes, eyes off the Lord and thinking things have to look a certain way or that's got to be this way or the highway or it's got to be now, we can completely miss what God wants to do. So there's several premises that God, uh, or excuse me, Mark brings out, but God brings out in his word, is that delighting in him, delighting in God, in the Lord Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, worshiping the Father, that is the chief end of our lives. The Westminster Shorter Catechism says, um, the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And let me tell you about, that didn't happen for me. I've been a Christian almost all my life. I'm almost 70 years old. It didn't happen for me really until about 20 years ago when all that mattered in my life was knowing Jesus and the power of His presence to have His Word come alive in me. Simply, literally, just being with Him. And when that happened, uh, I had many, many desires before them, and some of them were from God. But because I had my eyes off the Lord and trying to do things in my flesh, they were never working out. But when Jesus became, and I'm not perfect in this, my full enjoyment and that I just live for your presence, I live for you, not what you can do for me, then God was delighted to give me my desires because I was walking in greater health. I could handle those wonderful things that he had put in my heart that he wanted to do. Um, but it all goes back to Jesus and living in that secret place with him and waiting on him, letting him transform us. And let me tell you, like I said, layers will come off and those deep things that God has put in our heart will come forth and he was willing and wanting to act upon them. Now we have that lie that the enemy tells us that the things that God wants for us won't make us happy or will be unfulfilling. Nothing could be further from the truth, but we often don't know what we really want or how we're wired until we get into God's presence and let him do that transforming work. Um, chapter 7 is all about doors. The door to Bithynia is the title of this one. It is about signs and doors, doors that open and doors that close out of Revelation, that God is able he's to, to open doors and he speaks through the language of doors to direct our steps. But we need, and this is what Mark brings out to us, we need discernment in the power of the Holy Spirit to discern what doors we need to walk through or should walk through or God's calling us to and what doors we shouldn't because not God doesn't close every door. He wants us to rely on him completely. And some open doors doesn't mean they're God's doors. And I want to tell you anything less than God's doors is going to be way less than what he has planned for you. So this is where, again, it goes back to intimacy with God, hearing his voice, leaning into his whisper, which we have been talking about, silencing the noise of our phones and our activities enough to say, Lord, what are you speaking? 
and what doors are you opening? Now, he, uh, Mark goes into something that my husband just taught on um, in, a, in, a, in a church service, that God's doors or signs often come after a decision has been made as we are taking steps of faith to move forward in God's will. In other words, God is putting something in our heart and he's asking us to believe for it before he gives us a sign or a door to confirm it. And most of the time, not always, that it happens that way. Rarely does a sign or a door necessarily precede what we're supposed to walk through. And so signs confirm, doors confirm. Now I want to give an example. I'm going to close with this. God has timing for closed and open doors. I've had a desire in my heart to go to the Middle East to a closed country. Uh, a one, one country in particular, that's a big area there. So there's lots of countries. I, I'm not going to say its name. I have had a burden to pray for the people of this, uh, this country for a while now, for again, for about four years. And it really stemmed from from a time in Asia, at Taiwan, when I heard a person that was ministering in this a closed country come and share. And she had actually invited Randy and I to come. But you know what? The doors just never opened. And I tried to force that door open, and it was just absolutely closed shut. And so just about four or five months ago, or actually less than that, probably about two months ago, I met with a friend, just a normal everyday friend, not, you know, anyway, I'm just going to say that. And um, she was t organizing a mission trip to this very country. I had no idea. And I was asked to go. Now this time the door is open and I'm walking through it. So all that to say, let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's walk in intimacy. Let's walk in faith. God bless you guys and I'll see you here next week.